the, I'm, I say the best for last. I think I know. In terms of the most difficult player, in my opinion, to evaluate and put a grade on. And that is that is JJ McCarthy. (laughs) I am all over the place on JJ. Yes. Love everything about his makeup. Love the way I know he's gonna test athletically, because I love those kind of I love what he did, how he responded in that national title game. When they were up against it, momentum had swung, you know, they were getting back in it. They, they had guys open. Penix just never found his rhythm. But the bottom line was they were challenged. And when he used his legs at the most opportune moment, he threw the ball when he had to, delivered some perfect strikes that were not, were not caught. They were dropped, one by Loveland, one by Johnson. Yep. I love the way he can. Hey, he didn't care about handing that ball off in the Penn State game. He's a team guy, whatever it takes to win. Jerome Moore's call and run plays. Hey, I, we'll, we'll run it down your throat, right? We mm. got Blake Corum. We got this offensive yeah. line. We got Edwards. Hey, we're fine. We got we got seven, eight offensive linemen. We, hey, play to our strength, right? Not saying I'm a weakness. It's just, hey, if we can win a game, how the last time I checked is winning the game. It's not worry about the margin, winning the game. So for, for, for a, a team guy, tough guy, super competitive, athletic as all heck, He's going to test out really athletic at the combine pro day. Does he have a howitzer? No, but can he make every throw? Yes. But he didn't have to carry the team. Mm. And you never, and you, you wouldn't the wow moments. I thought I saw a couple in the national title game, but it wasn't something you saw over a four quarter period. He jumped out as, as a franchise quarterback. To me, JJ, I'm at 23 on my big board, 23, 24 area field. I don't think I can move him any higher. Yeah. Can he go higher, possibly? Yes, he will. I'll ask you, where's he on your on your board? How do you feel about JJ? He to me is the most because he's a quarterback, and that's the most important position in all sports. He's the toughest player to put a ranking on. Let me make sure that I didn't, uh, as I adjusted these last night. So I want to make sure that I have this correctly before I say something inaccurately about where JJ ended up. He ended up not ranked for me in my top twenty-five okay. here, Mel. Uh, and I thought about it. He was he was twenty-five in my most recent edition. My uh, new player at. Player 25 is Darius Robinson from Missouri. Yeah. Who feel great about him, right? I, I love that. Chop guy. Robinson became my 25 this week. Oh, my God. Chop is going to be awesome at the combine next week. Uh, different uh, conversation for a different no, day. No. But I've talked to people at the highest levels of evaluation. General managers around the NFL, and they've all told me the same thing, Mel. Nobody knows on J.J. McCarthy. Anybody who tells you they know exactly what he's going to be, Mel, is lying to you. You're right. The sample size is just so much smaller on him. I'm not saying that J.J. McCarthy is going to be a better player or a worse player than Bo Nix. I'll have him ranked a little bit higher, I think, by the time we get to draft. But if you don't know what Bo Nix is by the time we get to April 25th, it's because you haven't worked hard enough. The guy started more games than any other quarterback in FBS history. J.J. McCarthy is incredibly difficult to find out. On top of the fact that he's basically a full-time starter for two years, Mel, as you mentioned, didn't have to do that much relative to other players. I've used this stat before on the show, but I'll reiterate it. In his last six games of the season, which, you know, that was the meat of the schedule. You had Ohio State, Penn State, Iowa in the Big Ten Championship game, and then, of course, the two playoff games, Washington and Alabama. 847 passing yards. 847. That's like 145 a game, Mel. That's just different. That's, again, 145 yards. That's a, that's a half of Michael Penix Jr., right? Well, let me ask this, Field. Let me ask, yeah. where, where, and who was his elite wide receivers? Uh, he didn't have a. Well, I think Roman Wilson's a hell Roman of a player. good player. Yeah, really good, good player. player. But where was yes. where was the Marvin Harrison Jr. Romo Dunze? Where was the Malik Neighbors? Where was the Brian Thomas Jr. Uh, didn't have that. Jaden had two of those guys. Of right? course, yes. And so again, yeah. where was they didn't have that? Portland Loveland was that. the best was player in that offense. Centric offense, run oriented offense, yeah. offensive line. Down. He didn't. He didn't have that. You know, right. he really never had that elite wide receiver who he could say, I got a go-to guy that I got to feed that ball eight to 10 times a game to. I completely agree that the, the receiver talent, I mean, every other quarterback prospect that we've talked about has amazing wide receiver talent. That being said, I don't think it was bad players he was playing around. It's the best offensive line in college football. You know, it should to me, it should have won the Joe Moore Award for the third straight season this year. Great season for Washington. I thought Michigan's offensive line was even better They've got, a, I think, a future, you know, top 50 pick, maybe a first round pick next year. Courtland Loveland at tight end. You know, they're going to have like, Roman Wilson's probably going to be a top, what, 75 pick at worst, right? Somewhere in that range. Mm-hmm. 
Cornelius Johnson could be a day three pick as well, right? I mean, not a star. I mean, A.J. Barner transfer from Indiana, maybe a day three pick as well, right? Um, but I, 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 I hear you on the argument that way, but I still have a hard time saying that like his his proficiency as a passer was on the same level of any of the guys that we have talked about. This is why it's complicated, Mel, is that like I can sit here and tell you some traits that I do like. And by the way, yeah. there's a really good chance he goes in the top 15 picks in the draft. Yeah. Really good chance. Yeah. Yeah. And the throws matter. When you don't throw the ball, you know, like a lot of these quarterbacks, college quarterbacks, they make a bad throw. You forget about it because the next five passes are, are coming out of his hand, right? You're not running there. Throw, 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 throw. And when you're doing that, the error you don't notice, right? You notice an error. When even a shortstop, he gets a ton of ground balls hit to him in the course of a game, right? He's gotten a lot of action. He's getting a lot of action. The, the one he booted in the first inning, right? Do you remember that when he made a great play going deep in a hole? He went, uh, yeah, made, made things happen, did his job the rest of that game. JJ had to be on, and you remember, the, I remember the Maryland game right before the half. Yeah. They got okay. a chance to, to, to extend after Maryland got back in the game, get a touchdown on the board, right? Throws a pick in the end zone, right? Yeah. Didn't see the tender, bad read. He throws three picks against Bowling Green, the two pick sixes against TCU in the, in the semifinal game a couple of years ago. He, when he made an error, you remembered it because mm. he wasn't throwing the ball 50 times a game. Yeah. Okay. So he was back in the Troy Aikman days, 25 passes a game, right? Yeah. 15 yeah. for 25 was a pretty good day back in the day in the NFL. It was. Okay. Yeah. Now, it, that, and that's where JJ was with Jim Harbaugh. It was kind of old school where the passes mattered. And you remember the error more than you would with a guy who throws it all over the yard. Yeah. Here's where I land. This is where I land on this. One thing I know for sure, Mel, the gap between quarterback three and quarterback four is large in my book. It's a gap. It's a it's a gulf, right? Whether you think it's Jaden Daniels as quarterback three, Caleb Williams as quarterback three, or Drake May as quarterback three, I feel terrific if I'm the Patriots and I take any of those guys quarterback three third player where I feel great about my investment. If I take JJ McCarthy eighth overall or 11th overall, the Vikings 12th overall, the Broncos 13th with the Raiders 20th with the Steelers makes me queasy. He yeah, could I'll be throw a names out. Remember Christian Ponder, remember EJ Manuel, remember, guys talking Jay, about. Remember, remember Jake Locker. Locker. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, we can go back in the history of the draft and say all these guys, like I say, were over drafted. Maybe Kenny that. Pickett. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. 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 So again, you're talking about, Teams have to have them. Can you talk yourself into some of these guys? Sure you can. I wouldn't do it. Yeah. Yes. You can talk yourself into a lot of these guys, Field. You can do it. And, again, that's why it's going to be really interesting to see, you know, who, as you say, is QB4. Is it JJ? Is it Michael Penix Jr.? Is it Bo Nix? Yep. Uh, you know, it's, it's still a, a battle. But I do think athletically at the Combine, uh, and like I said, does the Combine really matter? But I think it will show how, how athletically gifted J.J. McCarthy is. 